Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Isa Musa Poultry Farm. Uh, if you are new to this channel, please do not forget to subscribe my channel, like, comment, and uh, share for other people to benefit from the information we are passing across. And uh, if you've already subscribed my channel, please do not forget to turn on the notification button for more video upload. Uh, thank you. In today's video, uh, we're going to talk about uh, the laying period for goods, uh, what you need and uh, the types of goods that we have in our farm. Uh, so before I move uh, further into the discussion for today, uh, let me quickly so, uh, summarize something for you guys so that you can benefit from the advantage of uh, raising goods. Goods are just like every other poultry uh, one can raise. Goods are raised for several reasons, just uh, like uh, geese as pet, geese as weeders, geese as guards, geese for goose eggs, geese for goslings, geese for the exhibition, uh, geese for meat, geese for feather and downs, goose for Christmas. So uh, these are several reasons that uh, maybe one can maybe keep goose for. The goose is ideally suited to sustainable animal production practice because uh, it can consume and digest large amount of high fiber feed stuff. It is behavioral patterns make it easy to manage. It has a rapid growth rate, the fastest of avian species used for meat. Uh, it is feathers and fatty liver are valuable additional product. Since these are selective with respect to what plant they eat, they can be used to weed a large variety of crops. The feeding of geese during the egg laying period is perhaps the most important feeding period in the entire cycle of goose production. Poor nutrition during this period will adversely affect egg production and the low rate of lay of geese is already one of the major constraints in its production. It must be remembered that the geese must ingest adequate nutrients both for the body maintenance and egg production. Bleeding geese do not consume too much energy. The daily crude protein intake during the laying period should be between 45 to 50 grams per day, depending on rate of lay and egg size. Of these, 25 to 30 grams are required solely for egg production. The goose must also consume between 10 to 12 grams of calcium a day, depending on egg size and rate of lay. To meet the need of eggshell formation, which constitutes about 12% of the weight of the egg. The intake of essential amino acid, vitamins, and minerals is important and must be sufficient to support both egg production and subsequent embryo growth. Geese can be paid exclusively on grass if you have enough of it and it is of sufficient quality. Grass contains all of the vitamins and minerals geese need when it is fresh. If you run out of good clean grass, you can substitute, give them wheat. Uh, it can be paid where you can put it inside a bucket of water. The wheat will sink to the bottom of the bucket and keep rats and mice from eating or contaminating the food. Without grass, a medium-sized goose will eat around 200 grams of food per day. Geese love grains such as cabbage, cauliflower leaves, and lettuce. They will also eat leftover vegetables like cooked potatoes, carrot, uh, and many other leftover vegetables. So you can offer your goose uh, as a treat to them. They will eat it. And uh, during this period, you have to make sure your goose are well fed. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, you provide a good shelter uh, out of uh, during uh, this whole period. So as we can see uh, in our farm, uh, as we are preparing for the breeding season, our goose are just about to start to lay eggs. So we have to prepare a space whereby we can grow a clean grass for them so that after we feed them in the morning, uh, we can open them to come and have a grazing and uh, eat the grass. Because as we mentioned, the grass contains all their vitamins and uh, minerals they need 
uh, to maintain good health and good production for eggs. And uh, as you can see, we are just uh, selecting the area, so we kind of going to get some uh, water sprayer and uh, uh, we can use in order to maybe uh, spray in the place so that a good grass uh, will grow. And we can also as well have uh, spread uh, maybe some grass seed in order to enhance the growth of the grass around the place. So this is just a demonstration on if you do not have the materials need necessarily needed for growing your grass, you can use a simple method just like uh, the person on the video is doing. So uh, coming back to the types of goose we have in our farm, we have three types of goose. We have the white Chinese goose, as you can see, and uh, we have uh, the gray color, or some they call it the brown Chinese goose, and uh, at the same time, we have the emden goose. Chinese goose are readily identified by the knob at the base of its beak. The white Chinese geese have orange shank, beaks, and knobs, while the brown variety has orange shank, but its beak and knobs are black or very dark green. One feature of the knob is that it can be used for sexing at six to eight weeks of age, if not before. The knob of the male is larger and more pronounced than that of the female. The Chinese goose is relatively small in body size with mature male averaging 5 kg and female 4 kg. However, the breed is known for its high egg production and they are reported of Chinese geese laying up to 100 eggs in a breeding season of approximately 5 months. Here in Nigeria, our breeding season starts at the, uh, uh, at the mid November to uh, around uh, April. That's approximately uh, four to five months uh, our season starts here in Nigeria in our farm with the record we have so far. So uh, as usual, uh, just like I mentioned, uh, Chinese goose can lay up to 100 eggs. Uh, although 50 to 60 eggs is the average Chinese goose can lay. And the uh, egg weight is about uh, 120 grams. It's lighter than for most other breed. Because the body conformation and meat yield of Chinese goose is not as good as that of the other breeds, it has not been widely used for meat production, either as a pure breed or inbreeding programs as a female line to produce a crossbred commercial goose. However, a number of breed of geese have been developed by combining uh, Ansa Ansa type with Ansa Sagnoid type using the Chinese goose as described here. The Chinese goose is reported to be very effective as a guard animal. In addition, it has strong legs and when required, can range over large distance to forage. This may explain in part why the distribution of these birds extend beyond the borders of China and we have them here. As you can see, they are swimming inside Kano state of Nigeria. Uh, the Emden goose uh, or Emden is a German breed of domestic goose. It is named for the town of Emden in northwesternmost Germany. The Emden goose, it is uh, what people commonly refer to the local goose here in Nigeria, but that uh, is not correct. Emden goose way bigger than the local goose. The Emden is a white goose with relatively tight feathering, an erect stand, orange shank, and an orange beak. Most strain of Emden can be sexed on the down color of the gosling as male are a lighter gray than females. This difference is evident until the goslings are two to three weeks of age. The breed has been relatively popular for many years in both Europe and North America. It is one of the larger breed with male weighing up to 10 kg and female up to 9 kg. It has a moderate egg production producing 40 eggs per year with an egg size of about 170 gram. The Emden is suitable for heavy type meat production but is probably of more value when used as a male line in the production of a crossbred commercial goose. 
So finally, uh, this is coming to the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the video. Please do comment, like, share, so that other people can benefit from the information we are passing across as our goose are taking shower and preparing themselves mating in the water for next uh, breeding season. Thank you very much.